everybody, it's Joni Young here. Welcome back for another painting tutorial in acrylics. Today I'm going to be showing you step by step how to paint a forest. I'm going to be making this moody, adding some mist in the forest, some little waterfalls, maybe some steps, lots to show you and teach you. Hope you guys are ready to learn how to paint this. I want to thank you in advance for watching and subscribing to my channel. Let's go ahead and get started. I've got a 14 filbert a quarter inch dagger striper brush, a two rigger liner, 30 filbert brush, and a number four filbert brush. I'm also gonna be using a one inch mop brush for gentle blending. And I'm gonna really um, break this down into easy to follow along steps so that if you're a beginner out there and you don't know the first thing about painting in acrylics, stick around because you can learn so much from this one video and I encourage you guys to paint along even if you think you're not ready for a painting like this. I want you guys to do it. I'm challenging you to pick up a brush. If you don't have everything I'm using today, just use whatever you have. No excuses. Jump in and let's get started. Okay, so the very first thing I'm going to do is work on a powdery bluey green background. I'm going to be using my 30 filbert brush for this and my spray bottle just to spray the canvas to make it a little bit wet. That really, really helps um, your acrylic stay wet longer. It also helps blending. So I'm just going to spread the water around evenly and make sure that there's no drips. Now I have a feeling there's going to be some gold leaf that sticks to my canvas and will be in this painting whether I can help it or not because I have some gold leaf here from a very, very messy project and a huge fail of an art piece yesterday. Um, maybe you've seen my video already, but I, I decided to share it with you guys so you can all see how us artists make mistakes. Everybody makes mistakes. It doesn't matter how long you've been painting and how experienced you are. We all do it. So I thought I would share it with you guys and, and let you see what I decided to do after that big failure. Now that this is wet, I'm going to take my filbert brush again. I'm going to take a little bit of blue and green, and I'm just going to go around and I want this to be really moody and I often have a fun time with creating my backgrounds. So I'm just going around in these little swirly designs, like little figure eights. Here's a little heart for you guys. I like to incorporate little hearts sometimes. Sometimes I'll let you know I'm doing it, and sometimes I just have it kind of hidden there and wondering if you guys see it. Little hearts are just my way of thanking you guys and letting you know I'm thinking of you and I appreciate your support and sending you a big, big hug. Okay, so what I wanna do is add a little bit of white in here and I haven't rinsed my brush out. There's still just a tiny hint of those colors in there. What I'm gonna do is just start going over where I left off and adding this partially over. It'll just give it a little bit of a different look once we're finished the painting. Now I'm going to come in down here as well and just go over this area again. And I'm going to come over here Now with my blending brush dry, I'm just going to start to go around in little circles to work out any harsh brush strokes. yellow and I'm going to add this down in here so 
sort of creating the beginnings of a pathway here. So just sliding your brush side to side and then taking my blender, blender, mop brush, whatever you want to call it. Okay, so there's the very first step. I'm going to rinse my brush out. I'm going to go to my number four filbert brush now and I'm going to make a shade of brown with some purple and some yellow. I'll just add it right over here. And I'm going to start adding it sort of patchy like down here on the bottom. So this can be some shadows and some dirt on our path. We'll just start laying it in here one step at a time. Let's mix up a little bit more. Let's get a little bit more of that purple in there and darken it up. Then we're going to add a few lines that go up like this. And those can be a few little steps. So notice when I'm adding these lines, I start kind of here in the center and then I leave about half an inch and then start the next one. And then I start the next one a little bit further back, further back, further back and pull them more towards the left. And then I'm just going to very, very lightly with the tip of my brush, wiggle out a faint little line, just fades away to a little path that continues. Okay, let's go ahead and dry this off completely now, and then we can start coming in um, and build up our trees and layers. Okay, so I'm just going to start coming in with some really light um, trees faded in the distance. I'm going to use this same brush and I'm going to take some white with a little bit of blue, purple, and this sort of brownish color that we made for our path here. And I'm just going to make it a little more colorful yet it's going to stay muted because of this muted brown tone so add a little bit more white in there it's more of i guess a bluey gray shade and i'm going to add just a little bit of water to thin that out and i'm just going to start coming in and adding some tree trunks. Add a little bit more white. Make this one a little thicker. And I'm going to take some blue and purple, a little bit of green in there, and add a bigger and thicker tree right here. Again, green, blue, purple. I'm going to make this one a lot wider than the other ones because I want to have a few trees that really stand out. And then I'm just going to take the rest of the paint on my brush 
and pick up more when I need it and just start creating some half circles, loops like this. You come down here with a little bit more purple. I just washed my brush out to get rid of all the excess paint. Sometimes it works its way up into these ferrules and that can really ruin your brushes. Okay, so I'm going to go back into my green, a little bit of purple, a little bit of blue, and I'm going to add another tree here, and I'm going to add a strong bend in it, and then bring it out, exaggerate that, pull it back. And then make it slightly wider at the bottom. Okay, and I want to start going over more of the path area here. So I'm just going to add some rocks and shadows. Again, these little half circles. This will raise part of the ground, build up some lumps and some rocks and whatever else that might be in there. Take a little bit more of the green and add it along the side of the stairs. Take a little bit more and some yellow. Haven't rinsed my brush out. And I'm just gonna kind of flick around this way, this way, making it look like some leaves or some ferns back there in the distance. And together with the blue that's left in my brush and maybe a little bit of purple here and there, I can push a little bit harder to get those colors out and make it more of a darker forest green here. So see all that? Let's just take a moment to look at all the, the greens and the colors that we have, all the shades in here that we've created. We've got this really beautiful phthalo green, phthalo blue happening in the background by mixing our phthalo blue and the hooker's green hue together. And then by taking a little bit of purple with blue, green, and a little bit of yellow, we start to get these warmer, slightly olive tones. So we've got warm and cool tones of the colors in this painting, and that's what will really, really give life to your paintings and a lot of feeling and mood. Take a little bit of white and yellow, mix that in. And watch what I'm doing with my fingers here. Just twisting and moving around. Really, I'm just dancing around with the brush. And I'm gonna come over this tree trunk here. And I'm gonna add, go back to my bluey gray here. I'm going to add a little bit of spray of water up here. And I'm just going to kind of wiggle around here and watch what it does with the water. It's starting to kind of separate and drip down the canvas, looking like little tiny branches 
or bits of moss. Wiggle, wiggle, very light. You shouldn't have to push really hard. If you do, then you don't have enough water or paint. Or you might be a little bit nervous. I know when we're nervous, we can squeeze the brush harder or push harder. I'm just gonna drag my brush down here. This time I'm applying a little bit more pressure over this tree trunk. I know I have enough paint in my brush and there's a little bit of water up there so I can guide that down. And add a little tap tap here. You can push and tap now and you can create a few. Let's just take a little bit more paint on the brush. I always like to show you how much I'm applying because a lot of people, especially newbies, are overloading their brushes. So if you have a big glob of paint on your brush, it's not going to work. You're going to be left with a big glob of paint on your canvas. And it's something I can't really tell you exactly the measurements or the amount of paint to put on your brush. You really have to just um, take a little bit at a time. You'll know when it's the right amount. It's something you have to practice. Okay, I'm going to mix these colors up here. Can add just a little spray here. Comes in handy having a spray bottle. Now, if you want a, a little tip, quick little tip for you guys here to keep your canvas, your paint wet longer, spray the underside of the canvas and brush it. That will really keep your paints wet a lot longer. But it's something you might not really like at the same time because then it's harder to. I'm just gonna come in between here and add some little branches. It can be a little frustrating when you wanna add some layers to dry paint, but it's not dry because it's taking so long to dry. So keep that in mind, but I did wanna share that with you in case you didn't know that. It's a, a really neat tip. And of course, if you're still having trouble with your acrylics drying too fast, there's always a slow medium that you can get. They're not expensive and that will ensure that your paint stays wet. It'll act more like oils. I'm just coming down here and adding a little bit of shadows, roots. Now I'm adding it on an angle. See how I've got my brush on an angle like this and I'm tapping. So I wanna create like a little bit of a slope, an angle here so we've got an angle here here and also here okay so I'm going to switch colors I'm going to go over to uh, a little bit more purple here a little bit of yellow and I'm going to make that brown again work that paint out of your brush you can see it's right there in the ferrule the little bits of green I've got left in there and then have the paint loaded on the end of your brush and I'm going to just start coming in here adding these little half circles building up it's like a milk chocolate shade I bet you guys didn't know that you can make this shade of brown with dioxazine purple and cadmium yellow light. So it does um, depend on, I'm gonna take a little bit more purple. It depends on um, what shade of purple and yellow you're using and your outcome will be different. I'm gonna pull along here, 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 follow the steps. Make it a little darker. A little hint of that purpley brown that we made. Very light little sweeps like this. And let it look like little lines. Let's add a little bit in here as well. Go with that round bend and slope.
checking, making sure that this is recording in full focus and it's not blurry. Okay, so I just refocused my camera. I want to apologize. I thought it was in full focus for up until this point of, the, of recording. I fixed it now. Hopefully you guys were able to see everything well. Sorry again about that. Okay, I'm going to rinse my brush out now. It's getting pretty saturated with paint. And I really want to just start adding some light on top of these steps here. I want to really focus on some beautiful springy greens. I'm going to yellow up my green here, get it on the end of my brush, and I'm just going to start easing into it a little bit at a time, increasing the amount of yellow and white as we go. Okay, I'm going to add a little bit more white and yellow. And let's add a few little lines over here. I don't want them to be too big and in, in full focus or detail because this is background. So I'll leave the detail for some ferns and stuff up here in the foreground. Um, but I'm going to come along in here and add a little bit of yellow on the top of these stairs. With the belly of the brush and very little paint left in my brush, I'm just going to go around in little circles gently. A little bit up in here. Okay, I'm going to go back over to my green and purple. And I want to add a little bit more depth along the base of this tree here and along the right side, just up to about this point here, about a third of the way up the tree. And I'm going to add a few light little taps to make this part shadowed and light coming here. So it goes dark to the green and then to the yellowy green with the white. I'm gonna take purple. And start adding some darker areas here. Take some purple, blue, and white. Look at that gorgeous color. It's like indigo. And I think I'm going to come right over here and bring it right down. Curve on a bit of an angle here. Bring it out slightly. I'm going to take those colors again. I'm going to gently shake a little bit as I'm moving the brush. We'll look at a hint of that light yellowy green and brown came out. It's kind of a nice little bonus and surprise. I thought I would make this one look a little bit bumpier just to make it a little bit different from the other ones. Oftentimes when my husband and I are hiking in the forest here on Vancouver Island, we stumble upon a tree that is so quirky and stands out and has the weirdest lumps on it. And those are the ones that you end up 
getting your camera out and taking a picture of. Okay, so I'm going to just think about those trees and add little weird bumps here and there. And do you ever see, I don't know if you guys have seen these trees, that ha they look like little um, steps or little um, shelves or something on the tree. And they're like some type of mushroom or fungus that grows along the tree. And they're just the neatest things. I've seen artists um, paint on them. I never want to pick them off the tree, though, because I think I'm just pushing and tapping like this because I've got some of this brownish color down here and I'll just add a little bit of white wipe most of it off just pushing like that but yeah I don't like to take them off the tree because I think they're they've made a home there I don't know I'm kind of silly that way I don't want to mess with nature but if one has fallen and it's sitting on the pathway then I might think about taking it I haven't yet I'm not sure like what I what to do with it and how to um paint with them or paint on them okay I'm rinsing my brush out really well now because I do have from gently pushing on that I have a lot of paint pushed up into the ferrule there okay so what I want to do now is start coming in with some more light and I'm going to be adding some yellow and green here again and I'm just going to add these gentle little flicks let me take a little bit more white just touches of light Little bits of light here and there hitting the big leaves and ferns. Okay, I'm gonna watch how I loaded my brush. I gently pushed and fanned it out, wiggled. That'll widen it a little bit. And then we can just add these little fern leaves. Again, I don't want to add too, too much detail, though. I want it to just look like light hitting a little bit back there. I'm going to take a little bit more white. I'm going to have a little bit of light over some rocks. go back into this light brown color. I'm going to add a little bit here along the path. I like the greens that we have down here. I don't want to go over that too much because I do really like that. But I am going to add a little bit to the stairs on the per on the dark dark purple part of the stairs. I want to make them look a little more worn and natural and rounded on the edges. Okay, so I'm going to go into this light yellow green and this brown color that we have and I want to go over Part of this tree here that's a little bit too warm let me add a little bit of blue and purple to that I'm gonna get the edges here it's looking a little see-through have a little bit coming down here I'm 
We're gonna add some branches pretty soon. I'm gonna take a little bit of white and with the blue hint of purple in there just to give us a, a nice bright blue violet. And I'm gonna go over this area here. This will be our little area where we have some waterfalls trickling down. Just wiggle, wiggle gently up like this. Have it taper and get narrower. So picture like the shape of a triangle here. Now maybe this is a little step or little bridge area, stairway that goes up and then this creek from this little waterfall flows into here somewhere. Rinsing my brush out. What I'm gonna do is add a little bit of green, a little bit of purple. Too much purple. Need a little bit more green in here. And I'm gonna come around the side here and close this little creek here. Nestle it in here a little bit more, a little bit better, and more with some green along the side. And just a little bit in here. Switch over to my quarter inch dagger striper brush. Get it a little bit wet. Take some white in with a blue. Pull, turn to load. And I'm going to start right here. Gently pull, pull, pull and drop. You can have one long just one waterfall that comes down if you want but I like those ones that kind of just trickle down and there's different different um, tiers and different levels like this and then I'm just gonna lightly go over and I'm gonna pick up just slide to load the end of my brush, I have a little bit too much in there. So you want a little ridge of paint there on the end of the brush. And with each tier, you're going to just start a little flick like this. And then I'm going to just kind of tap along the base of that so we get some bubbles and foam little gentle bit of movement and splash. And make sure that it looks like it's flowing in this direction. So we'll pull a few little lines going towards there and under there. Gonna take my white and go over that. Clean brush. Let's just go into our yellow and white. Get a little dab of green on there. A little bit more yellow. And let's add little bits of light in here. Nothing special or fancy, just little dabs with my brush. Okay, now I'm going to completely dry this off and then I'm going to start coming in with some branches that 
I don't want to have any fog or mist over. I want them to stand out a little bit more like um, uh, these trees here. So I'll dry this off. We're going to add a little bit of fog in the background and then we'll do that. Okay, so it is all dry now. I've got a little bit of dampness left in this 30 filbert brush from washing it out earlier. It's probably going to be enough water to make a transparent shade of fog. So I'm just going to take some white here. Tiny bit of yellow. Yellow is really, really saturated. I'll just pull this out a little bit more. I really don't want it to look yellow. I just want to tint my white a little bit to warm it up. So work out most of that yellow to just a little off white here. And what I'm going to do is just start in this area here, lightly going over all of this here. And let's just stop for a moment and look and see instantly how pretty that looks. We're going to go over part of the stairs here and along the edge. The background here, we're going to leave this tree nice and dark. Don't need very much paint at all. I'm gonna get back here. In between those trees. And add just a, a tiny bit more because I know it's going to dry a little bit darker than this. And I actually really like how this looks, so I want to make sure it stays like this. Because it'll be harder to add it after Got a little bit of gold leaf in there. It'll, it would be harder to add it after we add the branches. Okay, so I'm done with that brush. Now I'm going to dry this off and we're going to come in with some main branches and a few ferns here in the foreground. Okay, so I think this looks really dreamy and misty back here. I'm liking that. I'm going to intensify that even more by bringing out some branches in the foreground. And I'm going to be using my long liner brush, some water. I've got a little cup of water here so you can see how often I'm going to be using it. And I'm going to take a combination of green and purple water. It's really important to have the water to thin the paint out. Not so much that it's see-through. Um, it's just, it helps you glide the brush out for your long brush strokes. So I'm going to come in and add maybe one right here. Gently pull and sweep. Gonna thin this out even more so I can add and just use the end of your brush. I'm gonna bring one over here. Make that a little thicker. Add a few little loops in here, and then we'll have some moss. You can tap a little bit for a bit of texture. You can use a different brush if you want.
Okay, and I'm going to add some that kind of wrap around here, the vine, and some branches. Just think about all the things that you see when you're in nature or what you imagine if you can't get out and go for those hikes that you want. Maybe you don't live in an area where you can or you're just unable to. Imagine, close your eyes and think about what you would hear in the forest, what you would want to see, and just go for it and paint it. Incorporate it somehow. If it's an owl or a bird, I've got tutorials for those, so you can have a look through my animals playlist, animals, birds, and fish, and you can incorporate, watch those tutorials and incorporate, make a whole composition out of combining all your favorite things. I have a heavier one comes down from here, maybe another tree from that side. Come in here and make this a little thicker. I don't want all my branches to be the same width. Just like my trees, I want to have some that are a little bigger, thicker, thinner, different colors, shades. I'm going to take my number four filbert brush and I'm going to add a little bit of green yellow white mix that up get sort of an army green dark green here and maybe we get a little bit darker than that and tap a little bit And then just gently pull and sweep. A little bit in here as well. Okay, so I'm ready to come in and start adding some ferns down on the bottom. And I'm going to be using, I want my ferns to be a little bigger down here, so I'm going to be using my number 14 filbert brush. And I'm going to take some green, yellow, and white. Sort of gently push, fan it out a little bit. And I'm going to start with a little dab like this, dab, 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 and then it's going to get a little bigger. And then we're going to start doing one on each side. Then they're going to get a little darker. Mix some green with the purple. So 
So it gradually goes into some shade here. So you can do the bottom ones first if you want. Start adding a little bit of white with the green. I'm going to go over to my smaller filbert brush now and mix up the light ones again. The green, yellow, and white for push that back in there. And I'm going to get a little bit of extra white on the end of some of these. So they look a little brighter. And I'll add one here, just a little line to start. And a few little lines like that. And then we're going to go and make one on either side. With a clean brush, you're going to sweep through. Take a little bit of that off. And then go into the dark. Now you can use any green, green, blue, green, and yellow. There's so many different shades you could go with for your ferns. Let's sneak a little one back here. Add a little bit of extra white on the ends. And I'm going to come in here and add a little bit of green and purple. so that my fern shows up a little bit more. And I'm going to come along this green and purple again, and I'm going to add some shadows here. Just a light little pull and flick out like this. I'm just going to gently push and tap. Another way to make some ferns, push more there and then thinner on the ends. Then some more green, some white. And I'll add a few more in here. A little bit more light to them.
I'm gonna go a little darker with this next one. Just work out all that paint out of my brush first and then load the bottom. If I've gotten really, really quiet suddenly, it's because um, I just find this part of the painting really relaxing. I love painting the the little ferns. If I look out my studio window right now, I can see these giant ferns too, along with ivy. So. Many of you are asking, how do, how do I stay inspired and motivated and where do I get my ideas from? A lot of them are from the surrounding area where I live. It's very lush. It's raining today, which I think makes everything look more green and shiny and beautiful. I'm gonna take a little bit of my phthalo blue. little bit more and then I'm going to add a silhouette more silhouette with the blue here over the green of a fern so a little line like that And I'll add some here as well over top of some of these, just filter over. Add some shade in here. What inspires you all to paint as I'm working on more of these ferns here? Let me know in the comments below. Everyone's got different reasons they paint. Some of you may have trouble with finding inspiration or keeping yourselves motivated. And I often ask you guys to leave your ideas in, in the comments below for other people that may need a little bit of help staying motivated. Just adding a little bit of extra bluey green in here. Okay, now I'm going to add a fern using the dagger brush. I'm going to add, make this one a little bit lighter. I'm going to add that uh, blue with white and green. Okay, so now I'm going to add a fern here. I think I'll have one coming right from here. I'll add a little line and then cut right through. those colors up again. I'm 
a little bit of extra white this time. Go over to this side. Add a little bit more light. Because I know it's going to dry darker. So I want to make sure that I have enough light there. Then I'm going to take this minty green. Add a little bit of that. A little bit more of the green. A little bit more of the blue. And just create a sense of all the different shades. white and purple. Add a little finishing touch here with some purple on the path. And then all these colors in my brush going to have a little hint of them coming out in the moss here. And my purple looks a little see-through on the tree. It's kind of nice and kind of glowy looking, but I want to add a little bit extra there. Well, I hope you guys have enjoyed watching me paint today and learning how to paint this yourselves. Let me know if you have any questions. Leave a comment below. Please subscribe to my channel for more and um, consider becoming one of my Patreon members where I have exclusive, beautiful tutorials and content over there for you. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon in another video. Bye!